Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Welch, and this is the first of four brief presentations that attempt to communicate the trade-offs involved in cancer screening. In this video, I'd like to be clear there is a trade-off, that there are benefits and harms to cancer screening. But first, let's define the term. What is cancer screening? It's the systematic search for cancer in people who have no symptoms or signs of the cancer. To be sure, we do screen symptomatic patients. For example, we will screen for colon cancer in a 65-year-old female with severe hip pain. But the symptoms have nothing to do with the cancer being sought. In other words, hip pain is not a symptom of colon cancer, or at least it wasn't when I was in medical school. I think it's also important to distinguish screening from diagnosis. A mammogram in a woman with a new breast lump is not a screening test. It's a diagnostic test, and we all agree diagnostic mammography is a good test. The debate is about screening mammography. Well, let's come to the benefits of cancer screening, and the primary benefit of screening is a reduction in cancer-specific mortality, a lowering of the cancer death rate. It is a big win that happens rarely. To understand why, we have to come back to the definition of cancer screening, the systematic search for cancer in people who have no symptoms or signs of the cancer. Not surprisingly, the vast majority of whom will not have the cancer being sought. So cancer screening is up against staggering odds. Screening must involve many to potentially benefit a few. To understand that, Consider a population of a thousand individuals being screened over a decade. There are a thousand squares here. Even in an older population, in a common cancer, only a few, maybe 10 or 12, would be destined to die from the cancer. So, this is what I mean when screening must involve many to potentially benefit a few, because only those people in the gray could be helped by screening. By the way, this is very different than treatment where the picture looks like this. Everybody can potentially benefit from treatment because everybody is sick. So cancer screening is up against staggering odds. There are few people destined to die from cancer, but we can't help them all. We can only have, help a fraction of them. They're the green squares. The rest are not helped. In fact, most are not helped. There's a limited benefit to cancer screening. And one reason is cancers are missed by screening. To understand that, consider this arrow. This is a cancer progressing in time. At one extreme, the cancer starts growing. At the other extreme, it causes symptoms. This is the period of time when screening can catch the cancer. Cancers grow at different rates. Here's another arrow. Cancer starts and then it rather quickly produces symptoms. This is a fast-growing cancer. This is a slow-growing cancer. Another way to think about it, this is aggressive cancer. This is a less aggressive cancer. This is a cancer that spreads quickly. This is a cancer that spreads slowly. Now imagine screening a population with a series of cancers. And at one point, we do the test, and we catch three cancers. They are the lines that are shown in the pink. And we screen again, maybe a year later, and we catch five cancers. But which cancers do we miss? We miss the short arrows, the cancers that are growing fast. That's why people who are screened still die from cancer. And that's been shown in every major randomized trial of cancer screening. I'm now showing you the health insurance plan of New York, the one randomized trial of screening mammography done in the United States. And you're looking at the death rate from the target cancer, in this case, breast cancer. And notice in the screened group, women still die from breast cancer. They die at a lower rate. And this is colorectal cancer screening. This is using fecal occult blood. And this is the Minnesota Colon Cancer Project. And notice when the screen group, men and women still die from colorectal cancer. They do so at a lower rate. So people who are screened still die from cancer. There are nine trials of mammography, and the best result 
is to cut breast cancer death by a third. There are three trials of colon cancer screening, and the best result is to cut colon cancer death by a third. And I think this is the best we can expect from screening, a reduction by 25, 30 percent in cancer mortality. Now, screening is often promoted in terms of saving lives. And I think it's important to ask the question, does screening save lives? Now, you're looking here at the deaths from the target cancer, but let's consider all deaths. And the picture looks quite different. Now, there's two things to notice when you look at all deaths. First, most people die from something else. Most people die from something other than the target cancer. And second, it's not clear that screening saves lives. No population-based cancer screening test, that is, screening those at average risk, has ever been shown to reduce overall mortality. So I don't think that's the right language. The right language is screening reduces the cancer death rate. Of course, we'd all do it if there weren't any harms. But there are some harms. First, to encourage healthy individuals to participate in screening, we need to heighten their sense of cancer risk. And the language typically used is we need to raise awareness. I'm not sure this is the most precise language. We have to make them a little anxious about the disease, a little worried about the disease. Perhaps better language is we need to introduce a little dis-ease. And I'll leave it to you to consider whether or not that's a harm. The most familiar harms are false positive results and overdiagnosis. Now, false positive result is a screening test that is worrisome for cancer, but ultimately none is found. Maybe that happens within a period of 24 hours. We do a second test and reassure a patient that they do not have cancer, or maybe it's a period of a couple of weeks, or maybe there's some abnormality and patients aren't really sure whether they're healthy or not. These have been called false alarms, and I think that's a reasonable way to describe it because it can be alarming to be told you have an abnormal cancer screening test. Overdiagnosis is the less familiar harm. It is the detection of a cancer that is not destined to ever cause symptoms or death. It suggests that there are some cancers that don't matter, and that was a pretty unusual idea and something unusual enough that I'll spend one video talking about it. Overdiagnosis is most widely understood in prostate cancer screening, but increasingly it's recognized as a problem associated with the early detection of other cancers, melanoma, kidney cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, and thyroid cancer. An unnecessary cancer diagnosis is an obvious harm. But the real problem is overdiagnosed cancers are typically treated because we're not sure which ones they are. And that's treatment that cannot help because there's nothing to fix. Treatment that can only lead to harm. So cancer screening has both benefits and harms. And I want to give you a sense of the magnitude of them. Among a thousand people screened for 10 years, there are benefits and harms. Somewhere between less than one to three will avoid a cancer death. False alarms are much more common, maybe two orders of magnitude more common, maybe a hundred in a period of 10 years, or maybe 200, 300, 400, or upwards of 700 in screening mammography. And then there's the problem of overdiagnosis, which may be very low in some forms of cancer screening, like colorectal cancer screening, or very common, as it is in prostate cancer screening. Now, there's no single right answer to this trade-off. There's no calculus that can tell you what to do. That's why I say screening is a choice. It is not a public health imperative. I think of screening a little bit like bottom trawling. That's a type of fishing where you're dragging a net across the bottom. Here's a picture of it, uh, what it really looks like. There are weights that hold the net down while you pick up things off the bottom of the ocean. Let's move in this direction. 
This is a picture, an aerial view in the South China Sea, looking at 50 boats, bottom trawling. As you can see, they kick up a fair amount of sediment. Now this strategy may catch some important things, but it will definitely disturb the ocean, and I think that's true of cancer screening as well. The harms are more certain than the benefits. So here's what you should know. First, screening has both benefits and harms. It's like a gamble. You're not sure which side of the equation you'll be on. Second, the benefit is the potential to lower cancer-specific mortality, to lower the cancer death rate. And there may be a few big winners. Third, the harms are false alarms and overdiagnosis. There are many small losers, those are the false alarms, and a few who lose quite a bit. And finally, screening is a choice, not a public health imperative. I hope this helps. Thanks.